Our region's business is sponsored by PNC for the achiever in us all. Now, here's your host, Bill Flanagan. Today on Our Region's Business, shale gas policy in Pennsylvania. In his recent budget address, Governor Tom Corbett said he would not support an extraction tax, and he asked his lieutenant governor to convene a commission to unlock the potential of the shale and report back in 120 days. So today we'll talk about best practices in shale gas policy from the perspective of a leading environmental organization and from the company that made the Marcellus shale find in the first place. But first, the father of the Marcellus shale. Well, he wasn't around three or four hundred million years ago when the shale was formed, but he was the guy who talked his bosses into drilling for gas in the Marcellus. He's actually a native of our region, too. Bill Zagorski is Vice President of Exploration and Geology with Range Resources, and welcome. Good to have you. Thanks, Bill. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, I heard about, you know, if you couldn't pass up the opportunity to meet the father of the Marcellus shale. Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a big mouthful for me, so up front I'd like you to understand that it was a group effort and there was a number of gentlemen that I was involved with. Uh, I tend to would call it the one, of the one of the founding fathers. One of the founding fathers. fathers. Okay, we can live okay. with that. We do that for the Declaration of Independence and Thank the Constitution you. as well. Well, tell me, I want to come a little bit about your background here in our region and how you came to be, be in the position to do this. But first, the Marcella Shale, the big discovery came what, in 03, 04? What was going on at the time that made you think there could be an opportunity here underneath our region? Well, there was a lot of things that were happening all at the same time. Uh, range resources and, and where I was involved, we were in Washington County uh, looking for uh, oil and gas since 2000 and had drilled a well on the Wrens farm in 2003. And in the midst of drilling that well, we were drilling to look for formations of potential below the Marcella Shale. And uh, despite some encouragement and uh, some excitement on our part, unfortunately, it, it, the well was a failure. And we were six million dollars into a failure mode, which was that's a lot of money now, but it was a lot of money for the company back then. But I really didn't know the, the significance of it until I had a chance meeting with a colleague of mine in Texas. And uh, through our discussions, he was showing me what has happened in the Barnett Shale, how big it's become. And at that time, I, as one of those light bulb moments, I go, oh my gosh, I'm just sitting here in the middle of something that could be as big as this Barnett Shale. And we were looking for small things with huge things right in the middle of us. So what was really hard at the time was, do I take another very expensive proposition to the company sure. uh, in another failure, or do, or do you uh, bring the other idea? And I was fortunate to uh, uh, bring this to Jeffrey Ventura. And Jeff Ventura is our president, who's also a Penn Hills resident. Uh, also originally a guy from our state. region, right? It's yeah. not the Texas the connection <laughs> that you guys think it is. It's much more, uh, there's a lot of small stories like this. And uh, he really passionately embraced the idea. Huh. And, uh, and he has, had seen what was going on in the uh, Barnett area. And uh, he approved the first uh, uh, frack of the, uh, of the uh, Renswell. Uh, lucky for us, it was successful enough to encourage further development. And uh, through our work, scientific work, and uh, Jeff's uh, you know, pushing the uh, teams along and building the company. And to be honest with you, we were almost $200 million in investments into Washington County until we really made the breakthrough that made this play what it is today. It wasn't until 2007 when we drilled, I think, our fourth horizontal well on the Gula farm that we hit the results that we were looking to achieve. And at that point, it was really the breakthrough moment. So wow. the 2004 was the first commercial vertical discovery. Was, it got you in, in, involved and interested but we had to solve the horizontal drilling aspect of it, and that didn't occur until 2007. Yeah, and I think that's one of the important points here. This is really at the very, very, very beginning. You've been at it for a few years. This is still the beginning uh, of trying to unlock all the potential that's underneath us. Uh, we're very early into the exploration cycle of this play. Uh, it's, uh, uh, there's a couple things that stop the uh, uh, earlier development of it. You know, the first thing we need to do is get uh, goods and services and the equipment that could do this type of drilling. And really that didn't occur until 2007. Uh, also when Range opened up our uh, 
Cannonsburg office, and that's one of Ray Walker's crucial uh, legacies, is he brought all the people and talent together that could make this happen up here. And now all of a sudden, everybody in the world seems to be coming to our region to either buy drilling companies or buy the reserves or start investing here. It's turned into something of a 21st century gas rush. Well, it's one of, now that we have more information and, and data, it, it appears that it has some of the most economic uh, gas wells uh, relative to other shale gas plays across the United States and North America and maybe for the world. Uh, but we're also understanding the geographic extent of it. I mean, some of the early estimates of the oil, uh, the reserve potential put it in the realm of a supergiant, but if you compared the top 20 supergiant fields, the early estimates would have put it down at the bottom of the list. Uh, most recent estimates of the reserve potential, the Marcellus, places the second largest gas field in the world. Second largest gas yeah. field, and that is the Marcellus itself. We only have a little bit less than a minute left, but I understand there's other shales both above and below it that might also have gas in them? There's two major shale plays that uh, have, uh, I would call, not as large a quantity, but are similar in terms of their scope and importance. The deeper Utica shale is about 5,000 feet deeper than the Marcellus. And right immediately above the Marcellus, about and maybe sometimes as little as 300 feet to 1,000 feet, is a series of Upper Devonian H shales. That those two combined themselves may have almost as much reserve potential of the Marcellus. So think about where we're going with this. It's huge. Got, got to be a blast for you. Growing up, what in Baldwin, went to Pitt, did a lot of shallow wells for years all over Pennsylvania. To suddenly find yourself in the middle of this thing, it's got to be a mind blower. Well, it's it's truly you know it's. It's an opportunity of a lifetime, and uh, it really gives you a perspective of how what can you can do when you work with the great people and have an idea and get the support and just look at all the jobs and activity it's going to create. It's, it's going to be a legacy for Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania that uh, it won't be forgotten. It's history. All right, Bill Zagorski from Range Resources, uh, one of the founding fathers of the Marcella Shale. Thanks Thank you. so much. Appreciate Thank, it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Well, next up, what's a best practice look like when it comes to Marcella Shale policy? One environmental group's perspective when our region's business returns.